the Holy Ghost people in these last days that are going to shout the name of Jesus. Don't you be afraid. We've got the Lord Jesus Christ. I've served notice on the devil. If God be for you, who can be against you? I want to tell you our God hears and our God answers prayer. He's the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. God has given us promises for this place, but I believe they're coming to pass now in the name of the Lord. I want to say to you by the word of the Lord, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the work of the Lord in word of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. We're going to see Holy Ghost revival. This revival will sweep many into the kingdom of God. Come on, say amen. I believe that God has raised up elders. God's raised up our pastor. God has raised up a church of the living God. And we're going to see the mighty, supernatural, powerful hand of God. And every promise that God's given us is going to be fulfilled in the name of the Lord. We have power over all the power. Come on, church. Let's rise up and take our authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the vision that God has given for this place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something. God's going to do it again. Come on, say amen. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it right here in Rocky Mount, Virginia. Oh, I'm glad we have prophets and apostles and pastors and teachers and evangelists and providence in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're not going to be blind in these last days. Come on, say amen. Whatever God's going to do, he's going to tell it to us. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel revival. When uh, Joe was four years old, he went with his family to Falcon, North Carolina. And there he was raised by his mother. She was an evangelist. He went to a to Bible school in Providence, Rhode Island. Sister Gibson, who was the founder of Zion, gave him a word. Joe, I have a word for you. Behold, how great things you're going to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. He walked off the platform into a ministry which started in Mineral Virginia. You know, we had made full circle. in between of ministries in Oyster Bay, Long Island. We pastored there for eight to ten years. Joe was 21 and I was 20 when we married. Joe won my heart with his auburn hair and his eyes were so expressive and uh, he made me feel like I was special too. Bless his heart. Well, Fred, this is a house the Lord has built. It's gone up by faith. 
And we're believing that God's going to give us a great time here on these grounds. Brother Corey and myself have bought this property, step, took a step of faith and purchased it. And we got this far, but this is just the beginning of the vision. And we're trusting the Lord to do a great thing here for his honor and for his glory. February the 18th, on the streets of Hyderabad, India. <laughs> Here's a familiar sight. Brother Colonel himself. Here's Brother John Atkins from Southern California said Brother Crandall has gone to buy a cow. <laughs> He's gone down here to pick him out a beautiful cow. There's about uh, six or eight of them down here feeding. And I just wondered if he, did you find you a cow? Oh, I found one. What? Yeah. Well, I don't know what breed it is. Well, I don't know what breed it is, but it's a little, little heifer anyway. <laughs> Full blood Indian cow. Why we selected this cow here now? We're going to auction this cow off. Got a beautiful animal here. Anybody want to make a bet on it? <laughs> and here's a whole herd gathered here in the village square. Here's the great guide of the interior, Brother Crando, studying the maps for the next journey way out into the boondocks. Is that where we're going right there? Yeah, we're going right down the coast to the Bay of Bengal. And here's a shot of the garden, David working and Brother Crandall back there hoeing. And look at all the fine greenery here. Vegetables, looks like they're going to be surviving here for a long time. How's the garden coming? Well, praise the Lord, Fred. It's nice to be back home on a little rest and, and uh, be working out in the garden again. Uh, some pe folks say I, they have a green thumb, I think mine's brown. <laughs> But uh, we're getting it started here, learning how to do a little farming here in Florida. Got some turnip greens coming, carrots. We got uh, onions, beets, tomatoes, squash, and uh, really a time of real relaxation. December 25th, 1974, and we're over at Brother and Sister uh, Crandall's here in Sarasota. Here is Brother and Sister Crandall. We're going to take a look around and see who all are here. <laughs> this is your sister-in-law, <laughs> Rosie. That's enough. Hey, take the microphone down take, to the, take the, the mic girls. Okay. And interview them. Okay. Sylvia? Well, I'm going to pass it over to Esther. This is my sister, Esther. Uh -huh. Hi. <laughs> and this is Mom and Dad. It was really nice to have Brother and Sister Clark and Freddie and Sylvia again with us. And uh, we really had a lovely dinner today. And, uh, well two or three different kinds of meat and vegetables and the whole thing. Right. It's awfully nice to see them. And hey, this is Uncle Doc, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Fred. How are you? <laughs> How is that uh, farm up there in Canada? Well, last I saw, it was pretty good. I think there's quite a bit of snow on it right now. Yeah. Well, it would have been a good place to have Christmas, wouldn't it, huh? Yeah. Not much snow around here. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the youngest member. Johnny Appleseed <laughs> Crandall. Hi, Fred. <laughs> uh, give, give John the mic, let him say something. Say something like John. How are you doing? Merry Pretty Christmas. good, you? <laughs> well, fine. Merry Christmas. You've been a good boy all year. I guess. That's good. We're here, we're going to wish Daddy a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. happy, happy birthday, birthday Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. So good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Come on, give her <laughs> and what is amazing is that this Christmas day is also Brother Crandall's birthday. Thank you. Yeah, Fred, it's awful nice to have you down with us, you and Sylvia, the baby. Have a nice year. Now, God has blessed this family. Yes. Yes. We're not going to take the credit for being super intelligent. Of course, we are, but. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we're going to give the Lord all the yeah. all the honor, all the
In 1971, my family and I were living in Sarasota, Florida. And after two weeks of earnest intercession in prayer, the Lord spoke to me very plain and very definitely. The Lord said to me that he was calling me to open a Bible school, but it was 11 years before this Bible school was open. We moved here to Rocky Mount, Virginia. I said to the Lord, Lord, it has been 11 years since you told me to open this Bible school and the school has not developed and I haven't heard another word about this Bible school and I wish you'd either bring this vision to pass or take this burden off of my shoulders because I really think you've overlooked me. The next morning, a little lady walked out of the choir and said, put her finger in my face and said, you said that God had overlooked you, but I have not overlooked you. You will open this Bible school. It will be called the School of the Prophets. And in 30 days from now, you'll have the first $30,000 to start the first building of this Bible school. Exactly 30 days, the Lord had provided $30,000. We started building the first building of this Bible school. Now God has blessed. We have many buildings now. The Lord has supernaturally provided for all these buildings. And now it's time for us to enlarge our borders. And the Lord is speaking again that we're going to have a great outpouring of God's Spirit in this place. Now the Lord has raised up my son Philip Crandall. God placed him here as the pastor God has put him in charge of this Bible school. And uh, I happen to be 87 years old. And the vision is going on as never before. And we're believing God that as we're sending students now around the world, that we're going to get this glorious gospel out. And the name of Jesus will be preached in all the seven continents of the world. We're asking all of you people to stand with us in prayer and believe God for the fruition of this great vision and this great plan that God has placed in this place. To the Lord be all the honor and all the glory and all the praise, for it's in His wonderful name. Amen. We remember seeing him in the kitchen so many times oh, yeah. with mom, 
stirring up the lamb spaghetti, <laughs> Ooh, making a big batch on. of clam chowder, <laughs> working on some greens and vegetables out of the garden. Always something good happening yeah. in the kitchen for the family. Things yeah. moving in that kitchen. That's and right, yeah. We just saw that. What fond memories. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but just going yeah. out to the park, Cherry Springs or in Williamsport, yeah. or, you know, when we lived down in Florida, going to the beach and taking the steak and the food and making mm. a wonderful, wow. exciting time out of it, wow. cooking the steak in the open air and the kids mm. frolicking in the water and just having a grand time That's together. Right. And that was Dad. He knew how to take the simple things in life and make them bigger than life. Right. What a yeah. lesson of faith. I remember graduating from high school and he said, Dan, there's a lot of love behind you, a lot of sunshine out there. Now go and get it. Wow. And he said, be strong and of good courage because you can do it. Wow. I didn't have any money, but I had faith deposited in my life. And I went out with that, was able to achieve what I wanted to achieve with the grace of God. But we're not saying goodbye. It's just, Dad, we will see you later.